All right, we're ready to go. Okay. Um, just welcome everybody to the school committee meeting. Uh, sorry about the delay. We were just uh, we had the press conference plus a couple of technical difficulties. And, uh, we are on now. So uh, I'm going to call the I'm going to call the meeting to order and do a roll call at the same time. Roll call. Ms. Biancaria? Here. Mrs. Clancy? Here. Mr. Foley? Here. Ms. McCullough? Here. Mr. Monfredo? Here. Ms. Novick? Here. And Mayor Petty? Here. Okay. Approve the records. Uh, the city approved the minutes of the school committee meeting on Thursday, July 16th, on July 20th, and also on Wednesday, July 22nd. And Wednesday, July 29th, uh, school meeting. So collectively on the roll call. Ms. Biancaria? Yes. Mrs. Clancy? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Ms. McCullough? Yes. Mr. Monfredo? Yes. Mrs. Novick? Yes. And Mayor Petty? Uh, yes. Okay. So we are. Next is the end of the endocycle summative evaluation uh, by the school committee. Anybody hear me? Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, we can. Okay. So, uh, as for people to know, that we have a summative evaluation, we have all the school committee members turn in their evaluations, and I try to summarize them the best I could. So, uh, if I miss something, I think you're allowed to speak afterwards if you have to. And, uh, but I try to collect everybody into one. Mm -hmm. So I'll go over the summative, then if people want to speak after that, uh, you don't have to, because I think the summative is the evaluation. Okay. Uh, Andrew, can you put up, can we uh, do the slides? Or? All right, and do you want to do it in the presentation mode? Yeah, no, this is perfect. Just go on to the next. Okay. okay Andrew, can you go to the next slide? Can anybody see? <clears throat> yeah, I think you, you got to share your screen like you were before, Andrew. Who's that? Andrew. Second. So give Andrew a second. I, I think you got to share your screen like you did before. Andrew, we're not seeing the slideshow. Oh, there you go. All right. Good. All right. There you go. So this is the uh, assessment analysis. There's two implementation of the plan is three. Four was the mid cycle goal review. Five is today some of the evaluation. Uh, so. Next slide. Okay. Students so educated average assistance based on the ratings for six spot specific measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely goals. First one is student learning goal by June 2020. Update utilizes a high quality teaching and learning framework to align and increase academic relevance and rigor across all grades. We'll take it to met. This is going to be met. This is plenty of significant progress. It's fully met. Ms. McCullough met, or Phil met, Mrs. Novak, some progress. Okay, next, uh, so we have, okay. next slide is professional practice goal by June 20th, by June 2020, implement a comprehensive district wide approach to monitoring measures and improving student math outcomes. We have had significant progress, Ms. Bean Fierce, significant progress, Mrs. Clancy, some progress, Mr. Foley, significant progress. Ms. McCullough, significant progress. Ms. Mark Bader, met. Ms. Novick, some progress. Okay, professional practice goal one met for significant progress and two, some progress. Okay, district one improvement goal. Uh, by June 2020, uh, implement a district technology strategy that prioritizes and supports student learning achievement, increasing the digital fluency skills of student, staff, and district administration. If it met, it's met. Mr. Clancy, significant progress. Mr. Foley, significant progress. Mr. Paul, Matt, Mr. Montreal, Matt. 
uh, Mrs. Novak did not meet. And we have one, let's see, one four, okay, four met, two significant progress, and one did not meet. District uh, improvement vote two. Uh, by June 20th, identify implement strategy to address social emotional learning and impact of student performance measure. And everybody met, everybody met. Mrs. Clancy, significant progress. Mr. Foley, some progress. Mrs. Ellis, significant progress. Mrs. Marcello met. And Mrs. Novak, some progress. So we had three met, two significant progress, and two, some progress. Okay, District 3. Uh, by June 20, develop a plan for improving retention and implement strategies that will increase access to well qualified, diverse candidates. And we've had some progress. Mr. Perry, significant progress. Mr. Clancy, some progress. Mr. Foley, some progress. Mr. McCullough, significant progress. Ms. Montfredo, significant progress. Ms. Montfredo did not meet. So we had three significant progress, three some progress, and one did not meet. Okay. This is Goal 4. Uh, by 2020, support development advanced terms of learning opportunities for students to develop intellectual agility, ability to think and act well, social activity, and personal agency, the ability to know yourself and the capacity to act towards specific ends. And if they met, being very exceeded. This is Clancy's significant progress, the fully significant progress, and if they met, and if they met, and so something like this. So one exceeded, three met, two significant progress, and one sometimes. The positive range for six five goals, one exceed, three met, 14 significant progress, nine some progress, and two did not meet. Right, next slide. Okay. The individual ratings for the assessment for progress for the goals, professional practice, uh, we met, the material met. Clancy met, it's the fully significant progress. Paul met, it's Juan Fredo met, just to go back to some progress. Student learning, uh, significant progress from the petty, it's being curious, significant progress. Mr. Clancy, significant progress. Uh, Mr. Foley met, it's the color, significant progress. Mr. Clancy, progress. It's to go back to some progress. It's the improvement goals, uh, we have petty, significant progress. Area significant progress. Um, Mrs. Clancy, significant progress. Mr. Foley, some progress. Ms. McCullough, significant progress. Ms. Montfredo met, and Ms. Novick did not meet. The deposit rating was zero exceeded, seven met, 10 significant progress, three some progress, and one did not meet. Okay, next slide. Okay. There are four standards of effective professional practice, which are rated at four levels of performance. Unsatisfactory, needs improvement, proficient, exemplary, as shown below. So standard instructional leadership, Mr. Petty proficient, Mr. Green Carrier proficient, Mr. Clancy proficient, Mr. Foley proficient, Mr. McCullough proficient, Mr. Montreal proficient, Mr. Novak unsatisfactory. Instruction 1B, uh, Mr. Petty proficient, Mr. Van Carrier proficient, Mrs. Clint proficient, Mr. Foley needs improvement, Mr. McCullough proficient, uh, Mr. Montreal proficient, Mr. Novak unsatisfactory, 1C uh, proficient, Mr. Van Carrier proficient, Mrs. Clancy proficient, Mr. Foley proficient, Mr. McCullough proficient, Mr. Montreal proficient, Mr. Novak unsatisfactory, uh, 1D uh, uh, proficient, being carrier proficient, Mrs. Clancy proficient, Mr. Foley proficient, Mr. Montreal proficient, Mr. Novak needs improvement. Data informed decision making, Mr. Petty needs improvement, Mr. Being carrier proficient, Mrs. Clancy proficient, Mr. Foley needs improvement, Mr. McCullough needs improvement, Mr. Montreal proficient, Mrs. Novak unsatisfactory. Uh, next slide, please. Stand one instructional leadership composite, exemplary zero, uh, proficient 26, five needs and three unsatisfactory. Next. 
Okay, instructional leadership, at least in the form of departments. Uh, superintendents done a fine job of doing programs like bilingual certification, when they continue to go each year as well as work around the continuing advanced placement expansion. I've done myself. Next comment, utilize multi, I think we're all serious. So. Utilize multi sources of data to inform our school district, uh, school committee, and stakeholders regarding the progress of our school district and address issues with SBA and input and review. That's the area. Uh, next is from Laura Clancy. Superintendent Fernanda has done a good job to form staff with the support. Staff has been able to work together to ensure that we have set standards to reflect high quality instruction needs of students and personalized teaching styles that meet the need of diversity in the population. That's the fancy. Mr. Foley, the school committee, the public does not see enough student achievement data. We put this in a long, long timeline showing the public trends in the Mr. Foley. Next. Uh, continue. Uh, evaluate principals, administrators, and ensure appropriate supports are being provided throughout the district. That's Mr. Pollock. Mr. Montreal, Superintendent Fernanda has expanded the college and career opportunities at the high school level with the program 18 capstone. Uh, PSA. <laughs> PSA testing. The implementation of the CL by literacy program. In addition, under her leadership, chronic absenteeism has been reduced as well as suspension. That's Mr. Montreal. Ms. Dalton Novick, the function administration of the education of 25,000 students. The second largest employer in the city is scattered, moving from one thing to the next, without little sense of realization and delegation. This year was, of course, a difference of everyone, but I appreciate the ability of administration to adapt to adapt to change circumstances and teach families and staff to perform, especially in the last uh, few months. That's uh, my spell. Um, and in the area, this is instructor leadership again continue. Students will be working with district leaders to develop remote learning plans for our school district to overcome challenges by ensuring positive growth and development. This is the area of Mr. Foley. Many students continue to struggle academically. Students play high up. Level of success before the expectation of President of the School Opportunity Act. The recognition of how to use the new, new funds to promote the not reduction this objective. Uh, Mr. Koa. Money, we'd like to see more utilization, implementation of district collected data and appropriate. Uh, Superintendent Fernando worked digitally with UMass Medical School, Horizon, and Greater Wista Community Foundation, City of District Officials, Wista Research Bureau, and by the way, provide funding for connectivity via hotspots, provide updates, as well as translating to seven languages to students, staff, and families during the pandemic versus Connect Ed, emails, texts, website. Mailings and social media. That was Mr. Mark Fredo. Next. Okay. This standard calls, this is instructional leadership continue. This standard calls for effective and rigorous standard based units, well structured lessons, and measurable outcomes. The superintendent is to ensure all staff design. There's no evidence given by Superintendent Benenda in the self evaluation of this indicator. Ms. Kovic, Mayor Petty. As we discussed in structural leadership, we need to recognize that in our increasingly aware world, no policy decisions should be made by, your, by the administration without considering it through the lens of equity. Every organization of any size or the guy is asking itself the same question about how they can adapt to change the social justice landscape and how they can be best expressed in internal and external policy. As myself, Ms. Dan Carrier, the COVID-19 leadership team comprises the mayor, the city manager, and the superintendent has developed and immediately informed leaders, stakeholders, and the community regarding multi issues and concerns by holding daily press conferences and conference calls and press conferences to discuss and review school programs, academic progress, city health priorities, support programs, and nutrition programs. That's by uh, Ms. Bean Kelly. Okay, next uh, one, Mr. Mark Fredo, Superintendent Benetta, is a good communicator with all staff members. It's providing the best practice in professional development. Um, Ms. Novick, one of the most troubling aspects of the self evaluation is the lack of data back in assertions. And there has, as well, been ongoing concerns raised by the community over the lack of data access, how multiple sources of evidence are being used to improve organizational performance and their effectiveness in student learning is not in evidence. The superintendent 
And then there's the self-evaluation, the weakness in the presentation of the administration. And, uh, like I missed over, uh, next slide. Okay, standard two, individual ratings. Two A, the environment, and we're putting the proficient. This is being theory exemplary. This is fully proficient. This is fully proficient. Uh, Ms. McCullough proficient. Ms. Montreal proficient. Ms. Norbert unsatisfactory. Uh, next one is human resource management and development. Uh, May pay needs improvement. And Ms. Green theory proficient. Ms. Clancy uh, needs improvement. Mr. Foley needs improvement. Mr. McCullough needs improvement. Mr. Marfredo proficient. And Ms. Novick unsatisfactory. Next one is 2C, scheduling and management information systems. May be proficient. This being here exemplary. This is Clancy proficient. Mr. Foley proficient. Mr. McCullough proficient. Mr. Marfredo proficient. Ms. Novick needs improvement. Or ethics and policies. May be proficient. This being here is proficient. This is Clancy proficient. This is Foley needs improvement. This is McCall proficient. This is Montreal proficient. This is Novick unsatisfactory. Next is fiscal systems. To E, Mayor Petty proficient. Uh, this being here is exemplary. This is Clancy proficient. This is Foley needs improvement. This is McCall proficient. This is Montreal exemplary. This is Novick needs improvement. Uh, next slide. Stand two management operation composite rating, four exemplary, ten efficient, eight needs improvement, three unsatisfactory. Okay. okay, these are comments on CN2 management operation. The role, uh, this is by myself, the role of the superintendent of acting best interest of the system. You can't read this. You know, so. Well, the superintendent acts in best interest of the system to manage the issues that are funded as a whole, not the individual requires that are better realized on a daily basis and measured outside. I'd like to see the superintendent post focus on long term strategic issues. Um, let's see, next is by Ms. Bean Carrier, held citywide community Zoom forum to review recommendations of our school district under the Super I mean, Scuba Opportunity Act plan to respond to numerous questions and concerns. Next is Mrs. Clancy, Superintendent of Fernanda Cruz, to provide oversight to the district to create a safe, efficient, effective learning environment. Mr. Foley, there are a few very concerning issues in this past year that caused me great concern. The first being, being the bidding process, the ultimate awarding of the transportation contract. The bidding process was only described as intent to manipulate the process to raise serious questions about the ethics and policies. Next slide. Management operations, work with the report of the Worcester State University for not only diverse hiring, but overall recruitment and hiring in general. That's Ms. McCullough. Uh, Next is by Mr. Monfredo. Superintendent Fernanda teamed up with Dr. Martin Peep and Dr. Uh, I can't see it, Sarada, Sarada, I think, Hammond to develop the importance of equity and rigor in classroom, well, culturally responsive practices. Next is Ms. Novick. Focus and delegation are absolutely necessary in any school district, but most especially when it was the size. Instead, there's no ability to prioritize. Centralized administration is in the weeds all the time. The experience of many in central administration further compounds this lack of prioritization and delegation. That's Ms. Novick. Okay. Okay. The Mayor administration needs to expand school management with qualified individuals to make sure the superintendent is not the sole decision maker or crisis manager or crisis manager. We need to be evaluating employees uh, through the administration, elevating, I'm sorry, elevating employees through the administrative ladder, investing in professional development so that they can take on more responsibility of our superintendent for time, space, and bandwidth to uh, create about next steps to address systematic issues systemic issues that we face. And Ms. Bianchiria worked with the uh, work with the school district leadership to implement a state of the art program to prevent safety incidents in our schools with hours training or lockdown informed counted and evacuated. And Mr. Clancy is 
producers refuse to be underfunded, and even with budget constraints, they have been new, new initiatives developed to ensure the schools provide a strong educational experience. And that's by uh, Clancy. So our next. Uh, Next is uh, management operations continue. Uh, a question whether the district has developed a cohesive, intentional plan to diversify the workforce of the schools beyond the evaluation of instructional assistance. That's Mr. Foley, Ms. McCullough, we need to focus on development and retention. Uh, Mr. Marfredo, Superintendent Fernanda continues to work with Dr. Heather Forky, Director of the UMass Travel Team, in the training of principals and adjustment councils on SEL services for students. That's Mr. Marfredo. Next is by Ms. Novick. More than once during my time on the committee, more than once during my time on the committee, District Legal Council has been enlisted to buttress the superintendent's arguments against the committee purview in violation of the council's actual line of authority to the school committee. Um, that was Ms. Novick. Next is Mayor Petty. Next year, the superintendent should hire a communication man to serve as a spokesperson for the district while they continue building a large communication arm to serve the traditional and social media needs of the community. Okay. This is being carrier. This is also continued for management and operations. Collaborated with the school committee, the mayor, city manager, discuss the fiscal 21 budget and focus on equity access the system, across the system, as Ms. Carrier, Mrs. Clancy, the administration is doing a great job providing career growth opportunities for our staff. We'd like to see an expanded employee recruitment plan to increase our candidate pool of highly qualified, diverse employees. Mr. Foley, I will note the inability of the district to provide Chromebooks in a timely manner to students about technology, given the nature of the pandemic and the loss of educational time. It is imperative that we provide technology for our students. And to be, this is Molly McCullough, work to ensure the school committee policies are adhered to regarding how some items are first placed on the regular agenda and then referred to standing committee for discussion prior to approval. That was Mr. McCullough. Uh, this is standard two, management operations again continue. This is John Montfredo. Superintendent Panetta proposed a 2021 budget that was approved by the school committee to support the district's vision and goals and how to achieve diversity enough to recruit strong minority candidates for teaching positions in most of the public schools. Uh, Ms. Novick, the committee has expected to approve the allocation of 9.4 million in federal CARES Act funding based on treasury tracking detail and a list of items without explanation, attached to dollar amounts that include the lack of guide. Those managing grants of federal funds in their charge, as well as the oversight of those funds. Okay. Uh, so we now we're going to standard three family and community engagement. Uh, okay, Mayor Petty, this is 3A, which is engagement. Mayor Petty, uh, proficient. This is being carried proficient. This is basically proficient. Mr. Foley needs improvement. Mr. Patel proficient. Mr. Montreal exemplary. Ms. Snowbeck is unsatisfactory. Sharing responsibility. Mr. Payne needs improvement. Ms. Dean Carrier exemplary. Mrs. Clancy proficient. Mr. Foley needs improvement. Ms. Patel proficient. Mr. Montreal exemplary. Ms. Snowbeck unsatisfactory. Okay, communications uh, needs improvement. Ms. Dean Carrier proficient. Uh, Mrs. Clancy is proficient. Mr. Foley needs improvement. Mr. McCullough needs improvement. Mr. McFredo exemplary. Uh, Ms. Novick unsatisfactory. Family concerns. Mr. Petty proficient. Ms. Dean Carrier proficient. Mrs. Clancy needs improvement. Mr. Foley needs improvement. Mr. McCullough needs improvement. Mr. McFredo exemplary. And Ms. Novick unsatisfactory. Okay, so the positive ratings, uh, exemplary five, proficient ten, nine, and satisfactory, and satisfactory four. Okay. okay, 
These are the climate, family community engagement. This is mine. The superintendent keeps a public schedule that is truly daunting, which is exhausting. However, on a macro level one, I'd like to see the superintendent to focus on learning how to address issues of racial, ethnic equity appropriately. Uh, this being Caria, uh, develop a welcoming uh, committee at each of our school sites to enhance the representation of each school by supporting our students and staff in expanding innovative pathways to include community members as advisors. That's what's being Caria. Laura Clancy. Uh, the district has created a different way to communicate with families, especially during the school shutdown. Some of these include ways of the families update the contact information so they can receive updated information, phone calls, and emails by Dr. Clancy. Next slide. Uh, Jack Foley, legitimate questions raised regarding racial equity, institutional bias, and student achievement in our district, unfortunately, is in conflict. Back morning and a general conversation is needed. My McCullough, I recognize the work that I've done in improving the family and community engagement standard. Mr. Monfredo, Superintendent Panetta, has expanded the role of ESL with many parents of all nationalities participating, with well citywide parent advisory council, and met with the leaders monthly. So, Mr. Monfredo, next to speaker. Our hands there. Can you have a grab of water? Um, okay, Mrs. Novick. Mrs. Novick. Uh, the administration must reframe, reframe its picture of the families of the families of the public school serve. Nearly 60% of families speak a language at home that is not English. And our families represent a, multi a multiplicity of cultures and races and ethnicities. It's not enough to post that is static on our website. As a, as, as a statistic on our website, we must frame all that we do in that context. We have Teddy, and the committee provides pointed, concerted, constructive criticism. It is the role of the superintendent to receive this input in a separate manner, weigh it on its merits, and adapt accordingly. I prefer that the superintendent receive thoughts and suggestions from students and parents in a more constructive, proactive manner. Uh, Mr. Dean Carrier. Supportive students, community members, and staff who have, rec who have recommendations for increase of mental health counselors and school adjustment counselors. That is Ms. Bean Carey. Our next, uh, this is from Mrs. Clancy. District administration participated in school committee public forums focusing on updates in the 2021 calendar school year, which were very successful. Very important part engaging our families in the community. Thank you, Mrs. Clancy. Mr. Foley, I have concerns also regarding the district's willingness to truly partner with community groups and share the process of helping our students and our staff be successful. Too many times we hear about the community groups being left out of the process and the discussions, and we could assist the district tremendously. Thank you, Mr. Foley, Molly McCullough. I do not believe that there is more that. We can do, but I do not believe that there is more that we can do. But we also recognize that there's been a significant amount of work that has gone on in the past past months. So, uh, yep. Next, uh, Mr. Montfredo, Superintendent Panetta has attended meetings throughout the year with higher education and businesses, and has also established a strong partnership within the community. And many social agencies and corporate establishments. That was from Mr. Montredo. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Novick, two way communication call for an extended opportunities for community to talk back to the district, to share concerns, to ask for assistance, to express opinions, to reshape the future of the district, and lamentably, few. Okay, next. I just want to make sure everybody's still can hear me, right? Yes, we can. There are numerous organizations that want to work with the Worcester Public Schools to help assist in the mission of educating and enriching the lives of our students. An administrator such as you needs to be judicious on which organizations that need to serve our district best. Mr. Mia Petty, uh, Ms. B. and Carrier, address charter spectrum. Negativity issues with the mayor and the city manager, which favorably impacted 
the home online learning from approximately 22% of Worcester households to ensure nutrition for students and family members of over 20 sites throughout our city. This is Clancy, doesn't just be a carrier, I'm sorry. And next is Mrs. Clancy. I believe we can do better in addressing family community issues. I continually hear from community members and families that have concerns with the district. We need to continue to work with the stakeholders to ensure that all families feel supported. Okay, next one. This is from Jack Foley. It took over a year to address the issues raised by the homeschool parents looking for clarity on the district's ability to authorize their homeschool request. That's Jack Foley, Ms. McCullough. Nobody could have predicted that we would be in the midst of a pandemic. We have done a great deal to improve working with the families and community groups. Ms. McCullough, Mr. Monfredo, Superintendent's time commitment has been exemplary. She does it with enthusiasm and caring attitude. She's a leader who motivates others. She's a good listener and a skillful communicator. Ms. Novick. Family community concerns for the standard are to be addressed in an equitable, effective, and efficient manner. This is simply not the case. Language, race, ethnicity, and various kinds of access all have a great deal to do with how concerns are resolved. Ms. Novick, our next page. Okay, this is professional culture. Okay, uh, this was for a uh, commitment to high standards. We have Betty proficient, this being very exemplary. This is Betty proficient, this is fully proficient, this is all proficient, this is very exemplary, this is very unsatisfactory. Cultural proficiency. We have Betty proficient, this is. Here is the very proficient. Mrs. Clancy needs improvement. Mr. Foley needs improvement. Uh, Ms. McCullough needs improvement. Mr. Montreal is proficient. It's not like unsatisfactory. Uh, next one is communication. We have Teddy needs improvement. Uh, Ms. Ms. Being carried proficient. Mrs. Clancy is proficient. Mr. Foley needs improvement. Mr. McCullough needs improvement. Mr. Montreal is exemplary. And Ms. Novick unsatisfactory. Next is continuous learning. We have Teddy proficient. This being carrier proficient. This is Clancy proficient. This is fully needs improvement. This is McCullough proficient. This is more fairly exemplary. This is Novick unsatisfactory. Shared vision. We have Teddy needs improvement. This is being carrier proficient. This is Clancy proficient. This is the fully needs improvement. This is McCullough proficient. This is more fairly proficient. Ms. Novick, unsatisfactory. Uh, next is managing conflict. We have very proficient, Ms. Being Curator proficient, Ms. Clancy needs improvement, uh, Mr. Foley needs improvement, Ms. McCullough needs improvement, Ms. Marfredo, Mr. Marfredo, uh, proficient, Mr. Novick is, uh, Ms. Novick is unsatisfactory. Okay, next slide. So we had four exemplaries, 20 proficients, 12 needs improvement. Six unsatisfactory. Okay. Uh, these are comments for standard four. While the superintendent is clearly capable, capable, I'd like to see her continue to improve her ability to express the goals and themes of the leadership in which the public schools as a whole. That's very petty. Ms. Kiria, expand access to career technical education and vocational partnership and innovation pathways. To affect the stakeholders and local legal priorities. Uh, next is Laura Clancy. Superintendent Fernanda has set a high expectation for our staff to foster a high quality education for our students. During the shutdown, the superintendent held meetings for her administration to keep them informed, updated about what's happening in the community, school district, and expectations for continued learning. That was Laura Clancy. Uh, Jack Foley. I will highlight concerns with the cultural proficiency component. Although I will acknowledge some movement over the past year, the district needs to significantly ramp up its professional development and awareness of this issue. Okay. Molly McCullough, I believe that the cultural proficiency, communication, community conflict are areas that, could, that we can continue to improve on. However, I do not believe that many steps have been made in the right direction. I do believe that many steps have been made in the right direction. That was Molly McCullough. John Monfredo, 
Superintendent Fernando opened the school year with a gathering with the DC sir, to set the tone for the next school year by bringing all staff members together, by delivering the message that we are all in this together. Ms. Novick, the commitment to high standards, continuous learning is endowed that must be modeled by the superintendent in which the public schools it is not. Professional learning of the superintendent, more than improving one's professional practice, is nowhere in evidence presented to the committee. Next, uh, Ms. Novick, Ms. Novick, continued. A culture is built upon what is said in private, in public, in the newspaper, in the break room. The question that needs to be asked is what is the story of the Worcester Public Schools at this point in time? Where are we going and how are we getting there? What is the story we are telling collectively to our students, our teachers, our parents, our city, and the larger statewide community? Before we discuss how we should do, we do so, we need to craft an inclusive vision of the Worcester Public Schools which everyone can partake, Ms. McKetty, Ms. B. Carrier, <clears throat> developed and implemented a comprehensive bullying program for students and staff to include cyberbullying, hiring drug educators for students who are at risk for substance abuse. Uh, Laura Clancy, in the future, I'd like to see continued clear and consistent communication with the staff, families, and community partners especially when it comes to planning. <clears throat> Let me see that again. In the future, I'd like to see continued clear and consistent communication with the staff, families, and any time, especially when it comes to planning due to the continued pandemic and concerns around opening our school. That was from Laura Clancy. Themselves concerned with the district. Um, next. I note that the section of this is also professional culture. Um, this is from Jack Foley. I note that the section from managing conflict is the approach of the superintendent too often is confrontational and not de escalated. In the public arena, it is incumbent upon all of us to engage in thoughtful, professional, and genuine dialogue to move towards a productive ending. Okay, this is Molly McCullough. I do feel confident in my strength on the 4A, 4D, and 4E. I look forward to additional work on 4A. Okay. Next is Superintendent Fernandez is a leader who leads by example, promotes professionalism by working with staff and strong staff development program. That was by uh, John Montgomery. Okay. This is, I'm sorry about this. My screen's cut off a little bit, so I'm just going to take a look. This is by Ms. Novick. Rather than engage in implicit bias work requested by the community and vital and bearing effective educator for Worcester students, the superintendent has resisted and deflected into our other source of training throughout the district, frequently addressing our families from a deficit mindset rather than one which recognizes the strengths and knowledge families bring to the schools and their students. Okay, next page. Okay. This is also professional culture. All of this, along with the achievements and daily miracles that occur in our classroom every day, and up to a legacy, both for the superintendent as well as the elected officials that are charged with holding for a common. This being carrier, held several training sessions to share the vision of the district by the known renowned president presenters on the educational practice, which included cultural early literacy, Pontus and Pinal program, resiliency practices, and culturally responsive and racism training, as Ms. Bia Carey. Laura Clancy, I would like to see our superintendent place a focus, particularly around managing conflict by building relations, relationships with staff, particularly teachers. 
Well, some aspects of the shutdown were not in the superintendent's control. There have been times that the staff have not felt appreciated, but felt that their concerns were being heard. That was from Mrs. Clancy. Next is Jack Foley. In many ways, this standard is one by which the superintendents, the superintendents are judged in their opportunities here for improvement. Next is John Juan Fredo. The third administrative team, Superintendent Benenda has developed through collaboration with the dis district stakeholders, the portrait of the graduate framework, whose goal is to build a strength-based leadership model that will support implementation and ongoing improvement in the district. This program will permit staff to closely monitor students when they are, are on or off track for graduation and post-secondary success. As Mr. Montredo, Ms. Novick, we have a responsibility to hear and believe children. We have a responsibility of working with families. Too often, most of the public schools do not. Okay. okay. This is an assessment of performance on the standards. Uh, so we first have standard one, instructional leadership. Uh, Petty proficient, Penny and being carrier proficient, Laura Clancy proficient, Jack Foley proficient, Juan McCullough proficient, John Marfredo proficient, Tracy Novak, Novak needs improvement. Standard two, management operations. Penny and Petty proficient, Penny and being carrier exemplary, Laura Clancy proficient, Jack Foley needs improvement, Juan McCullough proficient, John Marfredo proficient, Tracy Novak. Unsatisfactory. Standard three, uh, family and community engagement. Uh, Joe Petty is proficient, Penny and Dean Carey proficient, Laura Clancy is proficient, Jack Bowie needs improvement, Juan McCullough needs improvement, John Marfredo exemplary, Tracy Novick unsatisfactory. Standard four, professional culture. Uh, Joe Petty is proficient, Penny and Dean Carey proficient, Laura Clancy proficient, Jack Bowie needs improvement. Juan McCall proficient, and John Marfredo exemplary, Tracy Novick unsatisfactory. Okay. So that gives us uh, three exemplary, so we can proficient, five needs improvement, three unsatisfactory. The okay, overall summative evaluation on the goals and standards, and the proficient, and the material proficient. Laura Clancy proficient, Jack Foley needs improvement, Laura McCullough proficient, John Marfredo proficient, Tracy Novick unsatisfactory. So zero exemplary, five proficients, one needs improvement, and one unsatisfactory. Okay, evaluate comments, uh, school committee comments. This is for myself. Amid a worldwide pandemic, I believe the superintendent Benetta has performed proficiently. Main way she was at her best in crisis, marshaling resources, we like staff and materials to work in hand in hand with the administration in that community. Bay and being carrier, work with the mayor, city manager, the health department, the safety, the safety director, and the school committee with input from the community stakeholders to support our students, staff, and community. Or that was Ms. Green Carrier, Mrs. Clancy, uh, since my staff in the school committee. I've seen a significant improvement in terms of communicating, communicating with community partners and addressing concerns in the district. Next slide. This is from Jack Foley. Superintendent Benenda has committed her life to the work of the Wisdom Public Schools. We we'll also note that the current planning for the reopening of the Wisdom Public Schools, the collaborative nature of this effort, and the communication with all parties including the members of the school committee, has been exemplary. The continuation of this inclusive strategic planning will address many of my critiques of the past year. That was Mr. Paul. Uh, Ms. McCulloch, I believe we continue to work on communication with the community as well as with our staff. I am impressed with the progress we have made in community group outreach translations for important messages. I know that much of this is has been done through a very challenging time. Thank you, Mr. 
Mr. Monfredo. Superintendent Panetta has continued to set the tone for opening of school by bringing all professional and non-professional staff members together to engage in a well-planned program and set the stage for a new school year. Okay, next page. Okay. The two overriding themes that arise again and again in this evaluation are the lack of capacity of administration of the district and aspects from roles to ethics, to leadership, to professional learning. In the, perpet perpetr in the per perpetration of the district climate of staff and students that too frequently is silencing, fearful, and discouraging, rather than corroborative, nurturing, nurturing, and supportive. That was by Ms. Novick, Mayor Petty, work with me, the city manager's team, and the community, the Houston Public Schools have accelerated a three to five year plan to be a device in the hands of every household in around two months, that's 5,000 Wi-Fi hotspots that occurred with the help of this team in Verizon. Let's see, being carrier, expanding chapter 74 courses with additional courses of comprehensive high and most technical high schools. I'm sorry, comprehensive high schools and most technical high schools. And uh, next is Laura Clancy. Superintendent ran community meetings to guide the funding of Student Opportunity Act and engaged with community partners to address concerns he had expressed last year. That was more fancy. The next page is Jack Foley. We need to drive the strategic pathway to the schools, bringing in families, students, community groups, and business and civic leadership into a strong partnership where every voice is heard and valued. This has not been the case in Worcester, with community members and groups not feeling part of the process and questions raised around the lack of collaboration. That was Mr. Foley. Ms. McCullough, cultural proficiency is something we continue to work on. We have a great base to build on. I'd like to see more consistent communication going out to staff system-wide. I am confident that with plans in place, these areas will be much closer to proficient in the near future. Uh, this is Mr. Power, Mr. Monfredo, Superintendent Fernanda has encouraged instructional assistants who are interested in furthering the education, become teachers, are you offering opportunities to receive teaching degrees from Worcester State University? Mayor Petty. The 14th point of equity that the superintendent agreed to be judged on. She has made real and substantial progress, but most people do not understand and know the work that has been done. If the work is being done, but the community is unaware of it, we are fully missing out on effective leadership. Uh, Diane being carrier, exemplified strong leadership qualities and cooperation with staff, the construction of the new South High Community School. Next is Mrs. Clancy, that was Mr. Incaria. Next is Mrs. Clancy. As the school year ended, in the, the district plan for summer school in the 2021 school year, the superintendent was able to acknowledge that we have struggled. This acknowledgement made a significant impact on the progress that she and the team accomplished to make sure we have a well developed and opening plan for our return to the school for the 2021 school year. That's Mr. Clancy. Okay. This is uh, Jack Foley. The superintendent's summary of the past year has very little data on student achievement. There's no training information. We need to keep this information publicly in front of us, in front of us all. And we should be judged by the rise or the decline of that student achievement data. That's Mr. Foley. Ms. McCullough, I'd like to see a more formalized and robust process for internal and teacher administrative conflicts that put emphasis on zero tolerance for the retaliation and retribution. Ms. McCullough, Mr. Monfredo, uh, the superintendent's commitment is truly outstanding and exemplified by helping families out at Andy's Attic on Saturday morning, bring a chair to our immigrants at various uh, community functions 
as adult learning events, uh, bringing food to the homeless families in need, and attending student support events, uh, scheduled education programs at the school, which is like Mr. Alfredo. And uh, this is my, yep. Now is the time to rethink the way in which we are educating our children, and as we try to reinvent how exactly that's being done, we should be looking to how we can use the crisis to create opportunities for the future. I, on behalf of the school committee, school committee would like to thank Superintendent Denner for her tremendous personal commitment to the success of our schools. I look forward to working with her, her management team, and my colleagues as we seek to make this of other schools one of the best learning districts in the country. And I think that brings us to the end of the summer of the cumulative evaluation. And, uh, School members want to speak on this. Uh, yeah. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, nice job of putting it all together. And and again, uh, this evaluation certainly was well earned by uh, uh, Superintendent Benenda. Um, again, she has continued uh, to be uh, do a great job on moving our system forward, and has stepped up with a team to deal with this uh, pandemic crisis uh, as well. Her commitment to, to education and to the community has been ongoing for she's continued to be a strong and committed leader and has moved our system forward to the next level. Um, she's a person and she's a leader who motivates others, a good listener and a skillful communicator. The time commitment has been exemplary and I just want to, uh, again, wish her very best as she moves forward. Congratulations. Okay. Else wants to speak? Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you for the uh, the long recitation there. May she have plenty of water tonight, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I, first, I, I recognize how challenging it is to work in public education, and and certainly the most difficult job there is being the superintendent. And you see that by the the short tenures that superintendents typically have. Um, and I also, as I did in my, my report, I acknowledge the dedication and hard work by the superintendent with a, a schedule and a, um, a list of activities that is very, very long. But I, I will express, as I did, that Worcester needs a community-wide collaboration right now to help our students, to help our district, to help our city be much more successful than we are. Um, the concerns I expressed in my annual evaluation here of concerns I've expressed publicly at different meetings or different events, so there shouldn't be much of a surprise there. Um, first, in the management and the operations area, Mr. Chair, you did capture that. I, I will say that I have great respect for the public, Worcester Public Schools fiscal professionals, um, and my low ranking there and the, the fiscal systems was not a reflection on them, but rather a reflection going back to the uh, the process and to the decision around the bidding for the transportation contract. And I still say that that raises serious questions to me about the ethics and the integrity of the process and the system, the way that was handled, the way that was put forward and the decision that was made to go with a company that provided uh, poor service to our students and our families at a much higher rate. I, I question the integrity of the system that has that. I also, as, as you already covered, question about the Chromebook distribution, the homeschool parents, and just management issues that really shouldn't fall upon the school committee to have to deal with the, some, some of those things. They really should be dealt with um, at, the, at the administrative level. But more importantly, the superintendent has to be the leader for the district. Superintendent has to bring all the members of the community, the families, the community groups, the business community, elected officials, and everyone together to in a genuine collaboration to help this district and to help our students move forward. Um, I appreciate the mayor's comment that the superintendent should look for a communication liaison, but I would, I would make the case that the superintendent is that person. The superintendent is the primary communicator and we need the superintendent to do more and to really um, embrace all members of our community as we're moving forward. Uh, a couple of quick points I'll make, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> and I made it in my, my narrative too, but the issue of institutional bias and racism was an opportunity for the district 
uh, to engage in real genuine dialogue, to look at some real professional development, and to look at change, rather than having a confrontation with no winners. And that's what really happened in that dialogue. Nobody won. Our, our, you know, our student representative made the best comment of the night when he commented that nobody is winning here, that there are no winners. And when you have that kind of confrontation, as opposed to stepping back and really, really embracing that kind of conversation, as difficult as it might be, but to really look at moving forward and to bring change into the district. Um, too often I've been hearing from community organizations and the business community about collaborative efforts to work in the public schools that have failed. And they have failed due to the issues of control and a lack of sharing of data and, and authority. We have to be willing to give up some of our power in the school district to bring other partners in, other members in to really collaborate with us and be successful. Um, I, I would really, as I, in my last comment, I asked the superintendent to really focus on standard three for next year, to really look at family and community engagement and come back next year with sub substantive improvements, with successful collaboration, with effective engagement and real shared collaboration because we have to have that in order for us to move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Ms. Patel. Did we lose Ms. Patel? <laughs> okay, I think we, uh, we'll come back. Anybody else want to speak? Raise your hand. Yeah. Not while he's back. Can you hear me? No, we're not. We're not. Sorry, Molly, you have to try again. Uh, anybody else want to speak? Uh, Ms. Novick? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. First, I'd like to make a motion um, that we release the, um, the individual evaluations as well, um, and I do that out of respect for the process. Um, any remark, any marks that were exemplary uh, needs improvement or unsatisfactory by state regulation have to be back with comment. Um, and thus it um, Andrew, can you hold that? I'm not sure who this has, but Andrew, you put that person on mute. Go ahead, Tracy. <laughs> Okay, um, Ms. Novak is with you in the second. Can we wait? There we go. Okay. Yeah. So, if um, if we could release the individual evaluations, um, because they are actually a requirement. Um, the comments are actually a requirement for any um, any marks that are exemplary needs improvement or unsatisfactory. It seems um, important for the public process for those to, to be public released. I know they're public documents, but I think they should be publicly released. Um, I thank you for capturing as much as you did in the comments, Mr. Chair. I do think it's incumbent um, upon, certainly upon me, um, but upon us as a committee um, to note that um, the evaluation of the superintendent, um, first of all, it's one of our, our main um, responsibilities. It's written right into the, um, to chapter 71 that talks about the responsibility of the school committee. Um, but secondly, the um, evaluation of the superintendent actually sets the standard for the rest of the district and uh, the degree to which we uh, take this seriously, um, the degree to which we base this on evidence, uh, the degree to which we base this on um, the experience of all of those we serve um, is really what um, makes the difference in terms of um, whether or not that's something that we take seriously as a system. Um, and the degree to which we do that then sets the standard for the rest of the district. Um, you had captured, uh, Mr. Chair, um, my, my general evaluator comments of the overriding themes, um, certainly being the administrative capacity around management um, and then the district climate for staff and for students. I think that we're seeing that again in some of the um, public commentary that's happening um, even now that's expanded over the last week. Um, I do wanna note um, two things in terms of the district improvement goals. Um, there, 
the, the degree to which um, we can give any grade on a district technology plan, given what the catastrophe that happened this spring. Um, I, I think it's just a question of whether or not we were, you know, we were paying attention um, to what actually happened here um, in terms of our, our grade there. And then the staff recruitment and retention, I appreciate some of the comments that some of my colleagues made. I do think it's important for us to actually ask the question of where the data is. Um, how many of, of different kinds of candidates are we hiring and are they being retained? Um, we can only decide that based on actual data. I do wanna warn my colleagues of the tradition of organizations hiring a chief diversity officer. Um, um, giving them limited purview as we have in Worcester and then with them receiving little to no backing them essentially being marked a failure um, and while I have great respect for Ms. Perez I fear that we have set her up for the same thing again here um, I won't go into all of this but I do think um, that when we talk about things like um, district culture and district management um, we need to be talking about a district culture shift um, and that's something that is first set by the school committee and then is um, is communicated from the superintendent down into the rest of the staff. Um, among, by the way, some of the, the, the things that people should be aware of is the degree to which they actually can take critique. And as has already been mentioned, um, that's something that's a bit of an issue for this administration. Um, if you can't actually find, take critique and then improve um, it's hard to see what kind of an educational system we're running since that's actually entirely what learning is based on. Uh, I agree with Mr. Foley's critique of the transportation contract. I wasn't on the committee at the time, but regard, still regard that um, aghast. Uh, it appears that mostly what we're doing is supporting the bottom line of an international company. And uh, I had also mentioned the degree to which uh, grant oversight was an issue, as you, as you pointed out. Um, Something though that I am particularly concerned about, you had pulled out the question of the degree to which we believe the voices of students. Um, and our students have told us again and again, last year, this year, they're telling us now um, that they don't feel respected and they don't feel safe and they don't feel appreciated um, for who they actually are in the Worcester Public Schools. And that's not something that we can make go away um, by telling them to talk to their principals or um, essentially kind of patting them on the head. Um, the, I, I was in a, a session earlier this year, Mr. Chair, where a student said, would you want to go to school where you didn't feel welcome? And we have children who do. And that's our problem. That's on us. Um, if we're not being equitable um, in how we deal with families, and too often we're not, um, and we're not being thoughtful and respectful of how we deal with staff who are different um, and not tolerating microaggression or anti-bias actions, then we're not actually fixing things. Um, the degree to which there's a systemic sense of fear um, and lack of support in the Worcester Public Schools right now is extraordinarily troubling to me as a member of the school committee. Um, and until that's actually taken seriously, first by my colleagues here, but certainly by the superintendent, um, we can't fix that. And that is a terrible thing to say about an educational system. Um, if our staff is in fear um, and doesn't feel respected, how is it that we can create a, a comfortable and comforting um, place for children to be learning? Um, so I am, I am troubled this evening, Mr. Chair. Um, but again, um, I would appreciate it if we could release all of um, everyone's individual critiques this evening, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to, uh, Hang on. Thank you so much, Mayor. Appreciate it. I know it was a lot of work to summarize everything. I certainly am open to having all of the information and all of the points that we had on the evaluation open to the public. I'm more than happy to see that occur so people will clearly understand the remarks. Um, and um, what the evaluation consists of. I do want to thank the superintendent for her hard work. I also want to thank the staff for um, joining in in what we consider uh, this pandemic since March. However, I do want to make a couple of uh, remarks on um, what we as a school committee look at. 
Um, when we talk about the transportation issue that's been brought up a couple of times tonight, um, we discussed the responsibilities of not only running our own transportation company, uh, but also um, what Durham had to offer. Is it expensive? It's expensive whether we run it ourselves or not. But let me tell you, there's not a day since March that I ever sat back and said, gee, I wish we were running our own bus company. Um, we have so many things to look at, uh, so many things to discuss, and so much of a responsibility um, that we bring forward. And I am so proud that when we look at what our team consists of, it can consist of a mayor who cares, a superintendent who cares and is concerned, and a city manager who's willing to sit down and take a look at how we're moving forward. We're, we are not alone in this. Um, and we haven't been alone for a few uh, years now. Um, I, I think of it as a team moving forward. And I like to look at um, our schools as a team. Um, when we talk about what we're doing and how we're going um, in the right direction in this evaluation is just a small piece of what we move forward with, um, such as any evaluation for anyone in their workplace. The one thing I do want to note um, before I conclude on this is the fact that over the last few weeks, I have seen um, report after report on, um, from the superintendent in her administration that is amazing at every scale. Uh, we look at safety as a priority, which it has to be. Uh, we also are looking at um, what we're doing in communication. What you did with um, Maki as far as communicating, getting it done, not having to worry about what we're going to do with our students in the internet. Uh, kudos. I mean, that, that's terrific. I don't see any other city or town in Massachusetts uh, being able to do that. Um, with all of that said, we did an evaluation on someone who had entered into a crisis that no one ever imagined. Um, let's just say we had many community meetings to discuss our budget. Uh, no one has a budget like Worcester has a budget. We are the example of what other uh, communities would like to have for a budget. Um, when we look at um, how we came on board with the city when they were looking for uh, protective equipment and we were willing as a school department to open our doors and find out what we had, we did what we needed to do. That's a team. That's bringing people together. Um, our teachers have been there for our students. Is it challenging? Absolutely. We would not be the city we are if we didn't have the challenges that we have. Um, but when we move forward, we are moving forward in a good direction, the right direction. We have much professional development that our staff will be looking at. Um, and it begins at the end of August. Uh, but right now, uh, when we're looking at the middle of summer, I don't think anyone has rested easily. And I don't think anyone is sitting on their laurels. And um, as far as how we go in our direction as Worcester Public Schools, I stay strong and proud and thank them. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Mrs. Clancy? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. And I just um, also would like to thank you for compiling this presentation. Um, at first, I would like to thank uh, Madam Superintendent and her staff. As we know, the school year did not end in a way that any of us imagined it to, but this team continues to work very hard and they're paying attention to details that a lot of us weren't even thinking about. And that those de the details and the plans that are coming out for the fall are evident of their hard work. Um, but as a new school committee member, I had to base my evaluation on eight months of this school year. And five months of that feedback was based on work done during the pandemic. And as I do agree with some of my other school committee members, um, I think communication was an area that we need to make sure that we improve upon. I also know that um, we need to keep the dialogue open and we need to be transparent in our data and share our, da our data. Because we have seen that when we're not sharing our data, people are getting 
are not getting the facts and we need to make sure that we are in front of this and that people get solid information from us. Um, like I said, I would also like to see major continuation with communication with families and our staff. There was a lot of communication, miscommunication when we closed down our buildings. And although I do see a change over the summer and I see things getting better, I think the community forums were very important to be held um, to get people on the same page. I think that we need to continue doing that. And we need to, st we're gonna have to continue to do that even as school begins throughout the fall um, to keep families and community members engaged in listening to what is going on. Um, and I know that you and your team have been dealt with an incredible task with getting our students and staff back into the classes, whatever that may look like. And like I said, I do ask that you keep communicating and updating us as community members, the families and staff, um, and our community partners. And again, and I thank you, and I do look forward to continuing the work as we move our district forward. Thank you. I'd just like to uh, thank the administration, uh, Ms. Menenza, uh, Superintendent, uh, being with us tonight, and there's a tough process to go through. Um, and but uh, you have my support to continue the betterment of this uh, school district. Um, and I think we just have to work on some data sharing. Uh, communication and also involving the community more. I hope to see that, as I mentioned already. And I want to give the administration probably like an A plus for the last couple of months. Here. Uh, and then we might we might disagree at the end of the day how we open schools, but uh, I think the uh, communication, as Mr. Foley pointed out, has been pretty good. And with both the school committee and the, and the community, I know people are listening. There's no easy answer to what we're doing. But if we're communicating, we're working together and, and being transparent with the public, which we have been, uh, and getting more into the, into the community, especially the communities of color, I think sometimes there's a, like I think Ms. Lobeck has pointed out, there's a communication issue trying to get to everybody, which is high. We have 25,000 uh, students, but we need to at least improve on that, I think. And one of the comments I had made earlier was during a nationwide discourse about race and ethnicity, in equity, there's clearly room for improvement. For generations, we have thought equality, the same for everyone. With equity, with equality comes expression of inequities of income, race, ethnicity, and a casual of overt sexism, falling to the guys the most qualified candidate. And I was proud to my, my comments, I was also proud to uh, work with the superintendent to fight uh, equal education funding along with the school committee. Uh, the superintendent should be pointed out of all the community meetings she attended outside. And in Boston, with us and the school committee members, and so represent a lot, and I think a lot of the school committees were there fighting for additional monies, which unfortunately we see that. So, with the pandemic, it's going to be a challenging time in the, in the budget year. But uh, I think we're all working together uh, on the same page. I think this is going to work out well. For the uh, any other comments? Then we'll see before we all set. Looks like you're okay. Uh, Ms. Spinenda, if you want to say anything more. Madam Superintendent, can you hear me? Yes, okay. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to thank the school committee for um, this comprehensive evaluation. Uh, I have uh, enjoyed, I think it's been a unique year, I'm sure, as many of you have said. Um, I do think that we've made a lot of progress uh, with our work on culturally responsive practices and our resilience training and uh, work for collaborative problem solving. Uh, we are going to uh, continue to expand that. Uh, as you know, uh, <clears throat> we've already seen some changes in the first year, but uh, effective progress, uh, sometimes the best effective progress is slow. Uh, in order for a culture to build, we wouldn't expect the culture to completely turn in one year. <clears throat> My concern with that would be it really wasn't getting to be an effective culture. So uh, we will continue with that work uh, and uh, reach out to the community. Uh, I have to say that uh, the work with the pandemic um, really has had us, uh, not only the district office and myself, but principals and teachers uh, really appreciate uh, the work that we can do with families, as I, I had said to the faculties as I visited their meetings, uh, is that families let us into their homes. 
So we were literally uh, at their kitchen tables and sometimes there were parents learning right next to their, to their child. And that was really something to <coughs> allow families to have a trust with us, to allow us into their homes and to have those conversations. So we wanna continue uh, to have those same feelings and to work so that every family does feel that they are appreciated uh, in the Worcester Public Schools. Um, I also have to say that I've really enjoyed our work together. Uh, I don't know if the public knows, but on the school committee and uh, the superintendent, myself, and district leadership have been uh, meeting often uh, informally uh, during the last month, especially um, as we really work together as really thought partners, uh, trying to find a solution to uh, this very big challenge of reopening a school system with not even knowing about <coughs> I'm sorry, the virus and uh, not really knowing about the definite of the budget. So there were a lot of moving parts and I really did enjoy having and so did my team that communication together. So um, I do think uh, the mayor is saying that people have to work together. I think that is the answer. And um, I, I really look forward to problem solving, continue to problem solving together with the school committee. And on the issue of my administrative team, um, I wanna say that they're amazing. Uh, they, it's been a unique year for them too. Uh, every challenge that came up, they worked to solve them. So we're a very strong, talented team. Uh, we're going to move together forward. Uh, we also have a very strong school-based leadership team, our principals. We have a very strong faculty. And uh, they all work together uh, because they love our students and families. And they want to make <coughs> uh, education the most effective for all of them. So I uh, understand that there are some uh, things we worked on, but um, I have to say that I think that we're a strong team. I think that we've been successful in a lot of areas. And like, like any position, uh, there are things that we have to work to improve. Um, and I think it's important that everyone on the school committee work with us to also help us improve because uh, I think we're good partners and uh, we want to continue to, to have that collaboration that uh, we've had this summer as we go forward so that we're able to make those changes that are gonna make a difference. So thank you. Thank you and I look forward, I think the school committee looks forward to that partnership with you and your administration. We've worked hard over the last few months and uh, I know we have a lot more work to do in the uncharted waters, but uh, we just have to make sure that we have systems in place and making sure these kids are getting the uh, rigorous uh, education. We need systems in place to make sure that's happening. Uh, and and uh, so, uh, there's online learning is new to everybody, and we just have to make sure that it works positively as much as we can. We do have a school committee meeting tomorrow night. Uh, Mr. Mender, right? And we're going to discuss the buildings. Yes. In a, in a week from Thursday, we're going to take, I think it's still a week from Thursday. Unless things change over the last, uh, next few days, the uh, school committee will be taking a vote on uh, what, how we want to handle the opening of the public schools. Correct? Yes. And can we also mention that uh, next Tuesday, uh, we're going to be having a Spanish forum. Uh, so that we'll be presenting our plan. Uh, to uh, the Spanish community and uh, that information is on our website and it is also their flyers and uh, we really want everyone to understand uh, and be, be part of the conversation regarding school reopening. Mr. Chair, just a quick question if I could, just to, on process next, uh, you know, after we accept the report or approve the report tonight, is that then going to go to a subcommittee for work on the goals or write to the superintendent for goals for the year and what's the timeline for that so we can reflect upon how those goals might um, have been influenced by the evaluation 
Yeah, we yeah, we're going to do the goals, and I think that we're probably a few weeks behind on that. So we had to figure out how to proceed on the goals. And I think uh, the best thing is probably send that to uh, I don't know, the best subcommittee, the education. Or, or the if it goes to the subcommittee, it's probably governance, but I, it could also come back to the full committee as well. I think either way it would be fine. I think we should start with a small committee because I think some of this is subject to negotiations too, if I remember right. So uh, if we go to governance, then we will uh, so we go, so it would be to refer to governance and uh, also to review the goals and present it back to the full school committee. And also as part of the motions to release the uh, Individual evaluations of the uh, school committee members. We could ask about that too. Uh, roll call. Ms. Biancaria? Yes. Mrs. Clancy? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Ms. McCullough? Mr. Monfredo? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Monfredo? Yes. Uh, Ms. Novick? Yes. And Mayor Petty? Yes. Okay, our next thing is uh, the State Committee on Governance and Employee Issues met virtually on Wednesday, July 22nd, 07 p.m. in room 410 of the Birkin Building. Uh, so we have a report on governance. I can go. I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry, Ms. Clancy, you're up. Yeah, okay, it's thank to, you. It's hard to hear you. <laughs> yeah, I got it now. Um, yeah, so the, the um, Standing Committee on Governance and Employee Issues met virtually on Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020. Present was myself, Chairman Clancy, Vice Chairman Monfredo, Ms. Novick. Representing administration was Dr. Frio, Ms. Boulay, Dr. O'Neill, Ms. Perez, and Superintendent Benenda. Also in attendance was Mr. Walton. So we first took up G, um, GB 0 223, and it was to consider amendments to the current student dress code policy, which would be included in the new student handbook and policy manual for the, for the next school year. Vice Chairman Monfredo stated that he is in favor of a gender neutral dress code policy for students. Ms. Novick stated that it was a step forward to include do rags, but felt that due to the current climate in which we are living, the proposed policy is a waste of teachers' time. She also referenced the Seattle Public Schools dress code policy as being one of the most inclusive and free of bias policies that is um, attached at, in the, on the next page. She also shared and read the policy, which she felt was more appropriate. And she also said that it was one of the issues that she heard most from students and families was that the amount of time and attention spent on policing students. Ms. Novick proposed striking everything from the proposed Worcester Public School dress code policy, beginning with the district's core values and replacing it with the following, which was the Seattle Public School dress code policy. Then we continued on to page four after the complete policy. Vice Chairman Monfredo voiced his concern that there was the first time that the Seattle policy was seen and that the special subcommittee had already submitted, sorry, that already submitted their proposed policy in which to go forward. He proposed that, a, that the current policy be voted on and the Seattle policy be taken to back to the special subcommittee for discussion. Myself, Chairman Clancy stated that, sh that I was also that I had also researched other school districts policies and was concerned about the section, particularly in the Worcester Public School policy that states that the school principals have discretion to render judgment, possibly creating reasons for conflict and that it may not be consistent across the district. I also agreed with Vice Chairman Monfredo that others should weigh in on this before making a decision. We also opened up for public comment. Um, we first got Betsabe Vasquez, Antonio Manu McCarthy, Helen Kennedy, Molly Roach, and Diana spoke to their concerns with the current policy, which included, but was not limited to, do rags, hoods, victim blaming, racial profiling, and religious headwear. Superintendent did make it clear that principals should be in charge of their school buildings, and the issue with students wearing hoods was the inability for principals to recognize who is in the building. Ms. Novick suggested inviting the members of the subcommittee to the next meeting and also to invite students, parents, staff to be part of the discussion. I, Chairman Clancy, made the following motion to approve the, to approve the proposed dress code policy. On a roll call two to one, nay was Ms. Novick, the motion was approved. I also made the following motion to hold the item and bring it, to hold the item in subcommittee and bring the proposed Seattle dress code policy and other 
policies back to the Standing Committee on Governance Employee Issues for further discussion. On a roll call to three to zero, the motion was approved. We also took up the next item, which is 0 230, which is to consider the approval of the proposed 2020 2021 school handbook of the Worcester Public Schools. I read, I read each of the proposed student changes and the amendments were made to the proposed changes. You, they follow on the bottom of page five and continue on to page six. Ms. Novick then suggested the following proposed amendments be discussed with the legal department. Number two on page five, voluntary transfer in information needs to be deleted. She, would, we also, she also recommended insert the conduct code the, con the code of conduct section, which is pages currently 38 to 48, and move that to before the legal policies section, which is on page 16. She also noted new guidance for Title IX and the reporting of sexual harassment and other Title IX infractions. It should be noted that the legal, that if the legal department approves the above three issues, they can be deleted from the handbook. Myself, Chairman Clancy, asked the following questions. Um, if the word certified male should be removed from the entire handbook, not just on page 20, since that was just noted to remove it from page 20. And then I had a question regarding um, suspension for 10 days with manifestation determination meetings um, on when those should be held. Ms. Novick suggested that, that there is a place in the handbook informing students what to do in order to change their name and gender identification. She recommended the following language be added to page 36 which is under the student records, line five, amending student records to say, in accordance with the Department of Elementary Secondary Educations assigning state assigned student identifiers to Massachusetts public students, public school students, district and name records are to reflect the student's stated name and pronouns. Nothing more formal than usage is required cons consistent with the statutory standard. Ms. Novick also requested that the word expulsion be stricken throughout the handbook. Also under code of conduct, Ms. Novick believes that rule 19 under extracurricular activity, page 45 should be moved to the top of the section under athletes and participants in school related activities, which is on page 48. Ms. Novick also asked if the district still uses Carnegie unit, units, athletes and participants under the athletes and participants in school related activities on page 48. Ms. Novick stated that the description of CPAC, I believe it's FedPAC and LPAC are not re reflective on Mass General Laws Chapter 71A and B. For CPAC, the suggestion quoting the following, citing Chapter 71B, Section 3, the Parent Advisory Council duties shall include, but not limited to, advising the school committee in matters that pertain to the education and safety of students with disabilities, meeting regularly with school officials to participate in planning development and evaluation of the school committee's special education programs. For the LPAC, quoting, Chapter 71A, Section 6A, the duties of the council shall include, but not limited to, advising the school district, school committee, and board of trustees on matters that pertain to English learners, meeting regularly with school officials to participate in the planning and development of programs designed to improve educational opportunities for English learners, and participating in the review of school improvement plans. Myself, Chairman Clancy, made the following motion to approve the amendments to the 2020-2021 school handbook, student handbook. On a roll call of three to zero, the motion was approved. Myself, Chairman Clancy, also made the following motion to approve the 2021 student handbook as amended. And on a roll call of three to one, the motion was approved. And on a roll call three to, three to zero, um, the meeting was adjourned. And that was it, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Any questions? Thank you. I did. I did. Good job, uh, Mrs. Clancy. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Pete Perry. Thank you. I, I was in the um, in attendance in the Zoom uh, for right. that. Okay, if you mark That's, that. If, yes. if we could mark that in the notes, please, because I was um, certainly listening to what occurred in the statements that were made. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Diana. That's okay. It's okay. Welcome to Zoom. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. I was probably too quiet. <laughs> I was quiet. <laughs> okay. Um, so we will, as amended, we will approve the uh, governance committee's report. Roll call. Ms. Biancaria? Yes. Mrs. Clancy? 
Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Ms. McCullough? Yes. Mr. Monfredo? Yes. Ms. Novick? Yes. Mayor Petty? Yes. Okay, we're on general business. Uh, to step the donation of warehouse space for storage of personal protective equipment from Chacharoni property for use by the district for 2021 uh, school year. And, uh, I just want to uh, thank the Chacharoni properties, Mr. Chacharoni and the family for doing that. Uh, it's much appreciated. So, roll call. Ms. Fina Carrier? Yes. Mrs. Clancy? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Mr. Monfredo? Yes. Novick? Yes. And Mayor Petty? Yes. Okay. I think we're on, my pages might be messed up. We're on 0240. That's correct. Uh, to consider approval of a prior fiscal year payment in the amount of $29, made payable to the uh, Language Testing International. Roll call. Ms. Biancaria? Yes. Mrs. Clancy? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Ms. McCullough? Yes. Mr. Monfredo? Yes. Ms. Novick? Yes. And Mayor Petty? Yes. Okay. Administration to accept a uh, Mass Library's Kids Act grant in the amount of $3,500. Roll call. Ms. Biancaria? Yes. Mrs. Clancy? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Ms. McCullough? Yes. Mr. Monfredo? Yes. Ms. Novick? Yes. And Mayor Petty? Yes. Uh, 242. Authorize administration to enter into agreement for the lease and space for five years for creation of a new language school. Uh, okay. Ms. Mr. Ontario? Oh, no, I don't want to speak to it, but I, I, I suspect that this is probably the first that some people are hearing of it. I wondered if the superintendent wanted to very briefly yeah, talk, idea. not at great length, but just so, so we're not sort of springing this on people. Madam Superintendent, maybe pray for the public so they understand uh, exactly what So, so this, uh, we're really interested in starting a dual language school in the West Public Schools. Uh, for the last couple of years, we've been trying to look for, you know, how we could maybe combine current schools that had lower attendance and it just uh, weren't able to do that. So when St. Stephen's became available, uh, we, um, really want to pursue it. And uh, we also had this year, a large number of applications for the dual language program for kindergartners. And, and because we value bilinguacy and uh, we, really want, we really believe that our students should speak more than one language proficiently, especially for the global economy that they're all gonna be living in as they you know, get older, that uh, we really, we really need to have a dual language school. So this is a great building. Um, it has 18 classrooms, so we would be able to really build a really strong uh, kindergarten through grade six dual language program there. So this uh, request here is so that we could enter an agreement or an RFP so that uh, we would be able to create this year the dual language program and then next year open up the first dual language school in the list of public schools. Uh, roll call. Ms. Biancaria? Quick, quick comment on this. Okay, quick. Thank you. I just want to say that I congratulate everyone who worked on this, um, even during a pandemic where we're looking at different avenues that will benefit our students. Kudos to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Biancaria? Yes. Mrs. Clancy? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Ms. McCullough? Yes. Mr. Monfredo? Yes. Ms. Novick? Yes. And Mayor Petty? Yes. Okay. You said you approved the updated 2021 school calendar. This might be updated again. But, uh, <laughs> we will call this. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chair? Yep, Ms. Novick. 
Yes. Um, likewise, I, um, there's obviously we sort of saw headlines and so forth around the state's waiver around time on learning and so forth. Um, is it possible for the superintendent just to give us a little bit of information about how those um, initial initial days with staff are intended to be used? I realize some of this is subject to um, decisions next week, but just to give some people some idea of how the time would be used, please, mm -hmm. through the chair. Thank you. I was hoping that I could explain this. All right, so uh, on the regular calendar, we normally only have two professional development days before school starts. Uh, so those days will stay August 27th and 28th. But to listen up, I think every school district, 10 additional days uh, for professional development and brought the school year down to 170 student days. So we'll be using 12, which is a amazing that we're going to have that much time to train staff there'll be a combination of safety training uh, to know about covid about um, the, the guidance that's sent by desi uh, regarding classrooms uh, separation of desks by six feet uh, if somebody does get covid in your classroom what's the procedure uh, information uh, about you know the monitoring of bathrooms seating arrangements classes and in classrooms. So all that type of information will be provided along with training on how to use technology. It will be technology training because every teacher is going to have to have a Google Classroom. So uh, most, the, thanks to our work last spring, most students do not use Google Classroom. But, uh, we are actually setting up resources in everybody's Google Classroom, tying it to the standards. So we have to learn about um, what that process is and have access to it. And then we are planning to let each school have five out of 12 days. That'll be site-based. That'll be working with the principal uh, so that uh, each faculty and uh, each principal will be able to feel that they're ready for this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, thank you, Madam Superintendent. Okay, so we uh, roll call. Ms. Biancaria? Yes. Mrs. Clancy? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Ms. McCullough? Yes. Mr. Monfredo? Yes. Ms. Novick? Yes. And Mayor Petty? Yes. Someone, am I still on? Yes, old 244. $44. Came out $834 for double honor. Sports made payable adjustments. Okay, roll call. Ms. Biancaria? Yes. Mrs. Clancy? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Ms. McCullough? Yes. To Monfredo? Yes. Ms. Novick? Yes. And Mayor Petty? Yes. Okay. Then we have executive session none. I guess we can adjourn. Okay. So tomorrow night at 5 30, uh, we'll be meeting. 5 30 tomorrow, night, everyone. So the motion is to adjourn. Thank you, uh, thank you Superintendent. Thank you, all the staff. Who on the phone for their hot work during the pandemic. So, uh, roll call for adjourn. Ms. Biancaria? Yes. Mrs. Clancy? Yes. Mr. Foley? Yes. Ms. McCullough? Yes. Mr. Monfredo? Yes. Ms. Novick? Yes. And Mayor Petty? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Okay. I'm